It's Melanie Bazzelli with the Ohio X UX Roundtable. Today, we're talking with user experience or UX professionals about their careers and how they got started. User experience is a great career path to get into as it has a lot of variety and makes things easier to use and understand in the real world and in the digital world. Let me turn it over now to our moderator, Felicia McDonald. Hi, I'm Felicia McDonald, a Senior UX Manager at Optum. We'll be talking with our panel of young professionals in just a moment. Our mentors on the call will each ask a question of the panelists. The mentors have worked with the panelists to learn about their career journey and share information about UX careers. Our mentors are Carlos Seda, Senior Manager of Product at Kroger, Carrie Ann Tutley, Information Architect at Interpersonal Frequency, and Mark Majors, Senior UX user experience consultant at Progressive. Now let's meet the panelists. Would you please introduce yourselves? Hi everyone, I'm Brianna Seals and I'm a product designer at Kroger. I'm Alex Samskov, a graduate student at Case Western Reserve University and a UX researcher at Baldwin Wallace University. Hey, I'm Donna Peyravi. I'm an a QA analyst for accessibility at an insurance company in Cleveland. Hi, everyone. I'm Sydney Baker. I am a product designer at the Kroger Company. Welcome to each of you. Um, Carlo, what question do you have for the panel? Uh, thank you, Felicia. Um, so first question, and I'll direct this uh, over to Brianna. So uh, my question is, how did you first learn about user experience uh, or product design? Good question. Um, basically, user experience wasn't really popular when I graduated from college. So I took a little detour around because I wasn't sure what I wanted to do in the technology space. So I started out as a QA tester. And in that position, I always question like, how did they end up at this solution or this product, what was going through their mind? So I asked about it and I was told that there was a separate team that handled that. So I was intrigued and then I came upon the opportunity to actually interview for a UX position and here I am. And I've been in the UX for about 10 years now. <laughs> Thank you, Brie. And, and Alex, same question. How did you first learn about UX? I learned about UX research in my undergraduate studies at Baldwin Wallace. I looked into what type of research each computer science professor specialized in, leading me to be drawn towards Dr. Hipler's studies, which was UX research. I then joined the UX research team, which is relatively new, and completed three semesters of research, and I really enjoyed it, and I could decide to continue my studies with them. Thank you, Alex. And uh, Donna, how did you first learn about UX? So I was very lucky that at Kent State University, they actually had a class built out for it called Introduction to User Experience Design specifically. And um, it was actually required for my major, which was Digital Systems Interaction, which it's not called that anymore. I don't know what it's called, but um, I just kind of went into it thinking like this seems kind of cool. I didn't think it was a whole career. And then I came out of the first class being like, I kind of want to do this like forever. So that's how I found out about it. Thank you, Donna. And last but not least, Sydney. Um, so I, much like a lot of people I've now met um, in this uh, industry is I've come from a non-traditional background. So I actually had my undergrad in the humanities. Um, and was able to connect to now a really close mentor who kind of naturally made her way into user experience design. Uh, and something I've, I've learned about the humanities and UX design is they're obsessed with the human condition. So where I was focusing on maybe art or history or language um, and how we were kind of uh, making sense of our lives and creatively innovating, um, that, that translated too into technology and, and user experience design. And I was like, wow, yeah, this makes sense for me and, and where I wanna go. Um, and the rest kind of like Bree said was history. Nice. And now to you, Mark, your question. Sure. Thank you. Yeah, my question is, so I'm going to go down the same path. I'm going to go right down the same way. I'll start over with Brianna. But I really was interested in, you know, what kind of advice 
would you give high school students if they're thinking about entering this career? I would say, um, like I said, I had kind of a maneuver path into the UX space. So I would first find out what field you want to be with user experience, because it doesn't necessarily have to be technology. But of course, I recommend technology. <laughs> and you could definitely, once, front, once going from that space, just figure out, it's a lot of different things you can do within the user experience space. So I would just say kind of try to map out a path for yourself and try it out. And if you don't like it, try another path. But there's different paths you can take to get there. Yes, that's some great advice. How about you, Alex? My advice would be to start early and not waste any time. If you're curious to become a UX researcher, look for teams that you could join and read some research papers about the ideas you want to study to learn more. I was I would have joined the UX research team at Walden Wall sooner so that I could have done more work in studies. So my advice would be to start early and not waste any time. Yeah, that's some good advice. How about you, Donna? What kind of advice would you uh, bestow upon a uh, high school student? Well, kind of similar to what Brianna said, um, there's a lot of paths even within UX outside of just, you know, do you want to do UX in a physical space or a digital space? But there's also like for me, I went from UX broadly to UX research and then I found out about accessibility and then I was like, I really want to do accessibility. And now I feel a lot more driven and um, just excited to do my job now that I have that kind of laser focus on a certain thing. So um, on top of that, if you can find a mentor in the industry, even just going on LinkedIn and searching user experience person and finding someone, I think because it's such a new field and there's so many people who have non-traditional backgrounds and kind of had to find their way in a sort of roundabout way to UX, I think a lot of us are really excited to just talk to people and get them into it. Yeah, I love that. So finding finding that kind of niche and then finding someone to help you along that journey. And what about you, Sydney? Uh, very similar to some others, uh, but I would really say get great at sort of optimizing the speed of your learning and growth. So yeah. how I think of that is figure out what you like and what you don't like. Um, don't feel like you have to kind of pocket yourself into one area. Um, that'll help you kind of get to places sooner um, and also get more excited about the learning process and, and your journey, because um, that might change over time. Um, but really lean into your passion, what excites you, um, and don't get too caught up with the job titles and the roles. You, you will find it so long as you figure out what, what really speaks to you. Good advice. I'll send it back to you, Felicia. And last but not least, Carrie Ann, what question do you have? Thanks, Felicia. Um, so my question, panelists, and I'll start again with Brianna, as everyone else has, and we'll go through. Um, what do you enjoy about your role? My favorite part about user experience is problem solving. And I also love to find out how people think and how they use things. So just as I mentioned, coming from the QA space, I was always curious about how they ended up at that solution. So now I'm a part of the solution and being able to go out, interview different users and things like that, and just understand that meeting what the business need as well as the, the, the user, I love figuring that middle part out. So that's my favorite part. Excellent. How about you, Alex? What do you enjoy about your role? I really enjoy that my work actually affects people and helps them. I get a sense that my research is important and useful. Most UX research projects have an end goal of doing something that is beneficial to people. And so I enjoy how our final results are applicable to the real world and helpful to people. Awesome. How about you, Donna? What's your favorite part? So I'm technically in a QA role right now coming from UX. So I kind of wanted to get a more technical background and sort of do the opposite of what some people have done coming from technical into UX, um, just because the technical aspect is so important to accessibility. Um, and, oh, I lost my train of thought, sorry. <laughs> no, um, 
Yes. Uh, so it's just been exciting to get to talk to people who have been embedded for so long and learn from them, but also bring that UX aspect that they might not have been able to think about in the past. Excellent. Always helpful to embed that UX knowledge in, in different areas of the, of the process. How about you, Sydney? What's your favorite part? Um, kind of similar to others around the idea of inclusivity and um, keeping in mind of others. I think that the turning point for me a lot of times is getting really uh, comfortable with failing. Uh, I fail a lot in my job and that kind of allows me to step outside of myself, remove my bias, my fear of naivety. Sure. So every single day you're going to come up with a different challenge, but that's going to make you think more about how being you can be more inclusive and make experiences more empowering for others. So that's something I look forward to is that challenge every day. That's great. Thanks so much, all of you. Back to you, Felicia. Thank you. And thanks to our wonderful UX panelists for your insights today. And thank you to our mentors for your help and support. To learn more about OhioX and the UX Roundtable, visit OhioX.org. Thank you.